Welcome to On the Same Page, a second generation series of experiences with nationally recognized and award-winning authors, artists, and creators, brought to you by KET Education and the KET Young Writers Contest. We're glad you've joined us to learn from and collaborate with industry professionals from across the nation, as well as from right here in the Commonwealth. Grab pencils, some paper, and your creativity, and let's get on the same page with today's guest creator. I want to officially welcome everybody. We're just so happy you're here. Thank you for coming. Um, we just are excited anytime we can celebrate just the wonderful writing and illustrating and creating that goes on in our great state and across the world. So thank you for helping us do that. Um, so on behalf of the education team here at KET, we bring you the opportunity to share your writing and drawing uh, in the Young Writers Contest. Uh, we're just, we just wanna say welcome. So I'm not gonna talk much here because we want to introduce you to our special guest, Michael Regina. We just can't thank him enough for coming and to share his creating processes with us, with you all. So without further discussion for me, I'm gonna turn it over to Michael. And Michael, thank you again. Awesome, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, cool to be with you all this morning. Uh, super excited to talk about uh, making a monster. That's what we're gonna spend our time doing. Uh, after kind of a brief introduction from me, uh, I'll talk a little bit about what my processes look like, how I got into making comics, and then we'll make something together. So it'll be fun. But uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar with who I am, I am uh, Michael Regina. I write and draw graphic novels, uh, middle grade graphic novels, specifically horror themes. So I like scary books and that sort of thing. Um, this is the sleepover right here. Uh, this is the book that I just came out with about a year ago. So uh, if you haven't read it, definitely would love for you to check it out. Let me know what you think of it. But uh, what I'd like to do with the time that we have this morning is I want to take you on a quick journey through my pathway of getting into comics and making them try to do that as briefly as possible and then spend the majority of the time doing some drawing with you all um, getting some suggestions if you have questions that sort of thing I want to give you the opportunity to ask them uh, so um, I'll go ahead and, and dive in if that's cool uh, so what I want to do is um, talk take you all the way back like I said briefly into my growth or how I got into making books and uh, this is important because my obsession with monsters goes all the way back to like when I was a super little kid. Uh, so this is a picture of me when I was like two, three years old um, and uh, just kind of hanging out and having fun. And the reason we're going all this this far back is because my first exposure to scary things was the movie Jaws. If you've uh, never seen Jaws, it's, it's my favorite movie of all time. Uh, I saw it way too young. I don't know that I would show it to a two or three year old, but that's when I saw it. Uh, and instead of it being like terrifying to me, uh, I really became obsessed with it. So I thought like, man, sharks are the coolest animal in the world because it was strange, right? Like um, I love monsters, but this was a real world like creature that was, I thought was like terrifying, but amazing and super cool. And so uh, for whatever reason, that movie just stuck with me and stayed with me as a young kid. And I got into fishing and doing all this sort of thing. So I love fishing even now today. Uh, my son and I actually just a few weeks ago went out fishing at the beach and we caught a bunch of sharks. But, you know, it was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, that's it's where it began was way back then. Um, and then the, uh, that like I said, that obsession kind of went with me as I got into fishing and that sort of thing. Now comics, uh, I was always into drawing, but I had never put to the pieces together on like what it takes to make a comic. I was just drawing weird things in sketchbooks and random sheets of paper. And my dad tells me a story about how he got called into the office because I was drawing monsters and homework and stuff like that. Um, and uh, so I was definitely into it at a young age. But the first comic I ever remember owning was this book, Batman and Death and the Family. And again, probably not a book you should give to a second grader or so. It was a pretty intense story. Of how, of how the Joker uh, ultimately kills Robin, you know, Batman's sidekick. Because there's a whole funny history with that in the sense that like readers got to write in and decide whether the Joker would do this or not. And they decided that uh, the Joker should win. Uh, so, but I, I read this book and what I began piecing together at a young age was this idea that stories can really have a big impact on us, right? Like they can stay with us in a big way. And I'm sure each and every one of you 
has a book or a movie or something like that that really has a special place in your heart. And at a young age, like, that was very evident to me. But what sort of changed everything was I was in the third grade going to school one morning and this kid next to me had a comic book that he had written and drawn himself. And I don't know why, but like I had never pieced together the reality that this was like a job somebody could have that they could write and draw comics and like all that. And I was just like, whoa, like third grade on like before third grade, I only had other one other like job that I hoped to do when I was a grown up and surprise, surprise, it was become a marine biologist. But um, at that moment, it was like, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to make comics for a living when I grew up. And so I just went home that night. I started writing and drawing my own books. Uh, these are some of them right here. This is the very first comic I ever made. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, it's really faded. It's hard to see it now. Uh, but th this is the best I could get the scanner to pull it out. And at a young age, I was just making copies of things that I enjoyed. So this was like my version of uh, the X-Men. Uh, and I had I carried these characters on for a long time, like in uh, the middle school and high school. So these are some comics I was still making when I was in middle school. And uh, in middle school, I actually discovered uh, anime and manga from Japan or like that was becoming a thing that was moving more and more over to the United States. And what was cool about that was that uh, in the United States at this time, largely, if you read comics, you were reading superhero books. So all the stuff that you you guys get to enjoy, like, you know, Raina Telgemeier books, um, Dogman, all that sort of stuff, those things didn't really exist for kids when I was a kid. Like, in fact, it's amazing to me that I'm talking to a group of students right now because my comics used to get taken away when I was a kid. <laughs> like if I brought them to school, they would get taken away from me. So it's amazing to actually be invited to talk to kids today about uh, comics. It's, so much has changed. It's really cool. But the reason this was important is it told me that like, hey, I can make comics that don't have to be superheroes. They could be just a story, right? And so uh, I kind of ran with that even as a young kid. Um, now, also along with this, when I was a kid, if you wanted to make comics, what that meant was it was very rare that somebody was the writer and the artist of a comic. It was more common that you you had a job. So you were the, either the writer or the artist or the colorist or something like that, but you rarely did everything. It happened, but it wasn't super prevalent. And I was always good at art. So I decided I was going to try to become a comic book artist. So these are some sample pages of comics that I was drawing in high school uh, as I was hoping to get a job when I graduated uh, into making comics. Now, I would actually go around to comic book conventions and try to meet editors at these publishers and try to get picked up. It never worked out, um, but it was a really good learning experience of like learning how to you know be rejected, honestly. Uh, being a writer and artist, you unfortunately deal with far more no's than you deal with yeses. <laughs> you get told no a lot and uh, you have to learn to take that or it's going to be a really hard uh, road for you. But uh, I graduated high school. I went to college. I went to the University of North Florida. This is the, the art building here in the University of North Florida in Jacksonville. Uh, I wanted to stay local um, and, and go to school here and live with, with my family and, and remain here. But what was cool is they had a nice art program. What was interesting, though, is I got into making paintings and stuff at this time, and I started to think maybe comics wasn't the way I wanted to go. Um, and I, these are some portraits that I did when I was in college. Uh, I thought maybe when I graduated school that this is what I would do. But the problem was I really wanted to tell stories still. And so I began to ask serious questions about what I wanted. And for a stretch of time, I thought the answer to that question was, I want to go make movies, because it was so difficult to get a comic published, printed into the world and stuff at this time. This was long before the internet was so easily usable by people. And uh, I just thought, you know what, the kinds of stories I want to tell, they would make more sense as a movie than they would as a comic, just the way the industry was set up. So these are some of my favorite filmmakers and the people that I think about a lot when I'm writing and drawing. So obviously Steven Spielberg over on the left who created, uh, who did the Jaws movie, Jurassic Park, you know, Indiana Jones, so many things that are like classics. Um, and J.J. Uh, Abrams in the bottom right, who did the recent Star Wars movies and, and uh, a movie called Super 8 that I love a lot. And then M. Night Shyamalan in the middle, who was sort of like uh, my my view into horror as a young adult that he did such a he does such a great job, whether you like all of his movies or not, of uh, one, he was a writer and a director. So he was somebody who was doing everything. And that was really interesting to me. And he was telling scary stories that had meaning and messages to them that were 
more than about being scary. It, it, there was something else to it, if that makes sense. And so these things were really resonating with me. And then I saw this image for the first time. If you all, if I can see some of y'all here, if hands, do you know what this image is from? Anybody? No? Any of you ever read the Amulet books before? No? Oh, if you've never read Amulet, I highly recommend you read Amulet. It's a graphic novel series by a guy named Kazu Kibuishi. And this was a page that he had shared on the internet. And I sat there and I stared at that page for like at least 30 minutes wondering what in the world I was doing with myself. Because this was a person who was making comics that looked like this. And it was a story. It was about a group of kids who go on this fantasy adventure. It was like suddenly the world had changed and this kind of story could exist as a comic book and, and be published by major publishers. And I was like, I now, it was like the second tick in the box of like, I now know what kinds of comics I want to make for a living. And so I, I started making comics. And this was also around the time that the internet was becoming a thing. So I was making web comics and putting them out there into the world. I didn't need a publisher anymore. I could just draw, scan it into the computer and share it. And that was such a big deal. So I made all these comics that weren't very successful, but they were teaching me a lot about how to create. And I decided to go make my first graphic novel without a publisher. I just decided, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I don't care if anyone's paying me. I'm going to make this book. And that ended up becoming my Adamsville series of books that uh, I self-published. And hopefully one day those find a publisher as well. Um, and uh, so I finished those. And then after that, I finally realized my dream of becoming a, um, you know, a majorly published author with the sleepover when it was picked up with uh, Penguin Random House. And so that was a big deal, obviously. Uh, and then real quickly, I just want to give you a quick synopsis of what the sleepover is about, and then we'll get into making some monsters. So the sleepover is actually uh, closely tied to some events that happened to me as a young kid. I grew up in a single parent home and my mom had to work late evenings at a restaurant. And so we had a, a live in nanny who stayed with my sister and I. And uh, I based the house that the book takes place in on that home, my sister and I's relationship and that and all. And then a nanny that watched us, a lady named Ruby, who I, I named her the same in the book. Uh, it's a fictionalized version of her there. But she passed away when we were young kids. And uh, obviously this was hugely impactful on us. And um, in the story, that what the, the same sort of premise sets up. You see this family, they have this nanny and she passes away and it sort of really affects them. And uh, his friends, Matthew's friends, want to have a sleepover party with him to encourage him and cheer him up. Uh, and little do they know that they've invited into their home this uh, witch from a uh, local legend. And uh, I'll skip over there. And the night kind of turns crazy. And that's uh, the, the big monster picture there. So it's a, it's a scary story about a group of kids having a sleepover party. And it turns into a monster story. So give me um, just one second. But that's the, the gist of who I am. Tried to cover that as quickly as I could. And what I'd like to do now is uh, we're going to start talking about building monsters. And what I would like to do is, if you can, let's do it in the chat because that will probably uh, keep this uh, as, uh, as manageable as possible. Uh, if you have suggestions, I want you to put things into the, into the chat. But I want to talk about how I generally start with monsters. So with monsters, what I typically do is I think about what the environment is that the story takes place in and the uh, kinds of creatures that might live in there. And generally, I kind of smash a few things together. So within the sleepover, I have a woman who is uh, who has made a pact with these evil ravens. And so she is a person, she looks like a person, but she looks like a, a bird, a bird monster. And so that took a lot of finessing and figuring out like, what is she gonna look like? Does she have a beak? Does she not have a beak? Uh, and I eventually arrived at a design that I was really happy with. And in the current book I'm designing, I'm gonna go ahead and throw up my, uh, my screen here again. I'm gonna put this screen over here because I'm gonna use that to do some searching. And uh, in the current story I'm, I'm drawing, it is it takes place on a river. And so I'm designing all these um, nautical monsters. And so this is a preview image for the, the new book I'm developing. You see this giant creature in the background of this, this nautical adventure. So, um, so yeah, I, I think about combining different elements and that sort of thing. Let's see if I can see the chat because it hides it when I share my screen. I'm going to see if I can pull that up. Cool, I did. All right. So uh, what I'd like to do, if you'd like to draw along, yeah, feel free to draw. We're going to start designing our own monster. Uh, and then, uh, but what I would like is if you have suggestions for some things that I can be combining, like I said, let's take two things 
I try to think of them even as disparate things. Things aren't the same at all. We're going to take those things and we're going to combine them. So if you have some suggestions, throw them in the chat um, and I will try to grab a couple that interest me and we'll start creating. And while I'm waiting for those to come in, I want to suggest, um, you know, I like I said, I love monsters. So a recent thing that I've really gotten into, I actually would recommend teachers if you're if you're not using this in your classroom, I consider looking into it. They're doing a lot of great tools to encourage storytelling and idea creation. I've gotten into Dungeons and Dragons. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> and what makes it a lot of fun is they have like whole books of monsters. And it's about, it's basically a cooperative storytelling game. And what's great is there's just monsters for days in here. And so I, I love going through this and coming up with cool, uh, seeing a cool monster that exists in there and coming up with ideas. It's a great tool for creators and it's also a great storytelling tool. So. Um, uh, they've got tons of resources they've just put out to help teachers if they'd like to look into how that could work in your classroom. So take a look into that. Um, so I'm going to take a look at some of the suggestions we've got coming. If you would like to do some drawing on your end, obviously feel free to do that. You can look through these uh, suggestions and start coming up with ideas. So let's take a look at some ones we've got here. We've got an idea to do something slimy, a fire monster, eels tentacles, something with a dog face, gators, and a devil, football player, a Medusa, that one's fun, dragon mixed with a Demogorgon, a half robot, half dragon, all right, let's see, let's try to get something narrowed down so we can make sure we're drawing it, I'm just scanning through this here, you know what, I like this, I, I see a fire monster, that sounds fun, and then an, an axolotl with wings. My daughter, my middle daughter, is obsessed with axolotls. Like we own one. We're upset. She's obsessed with it. Um, it's a lot of fun to feed it live fish because they are predators in the wild. And it's they're just they sit there on the bottom and they don't do anything. And then suddenly when they go on the hunt, it just is like a totally different animal in the tank. Um, Guess what? I have a pet axolotl named Phoenix. That's awesome. The one we have is named Strawberry. That's her, her name. We don't know it's a girl, but that's what we're naming her and that we do, we're assuming. All right, so I, I like this idea. Let's let's um let's try to think. I wanted to do a flaming axolotl in it, but axolotls live in the water, but maybe that you know it's a monster. What if it's it's changing some things? So let's go with that. So I'm gonna if y'all want to look through the list, if you're trying to come up with some ideas in the chat, feel free to grab some of these. There's some great ideas. But I'm going to do uh, an axolotl that's on month, uh, on fire. So this is an axolotl that is somehow managed to leave the water and turn into a giant fiery beast. So that's what we're going to come up with. So uh, hopefully everyone can see my, my screen here, my drawing screen. And I am using a program called Clip Studio Paint. And in Clip Studio Paint, I can draw everything up. I've got a little sketch layer here. So this is where I'm going to do some of my sketching. And as I come up with an idea, I'll blow it up and, and do some finished art with it. So I'll show you how I'm drawing here. Now, while I'm doing this, I would love to hear some questions from you all. So um, I don't know if someone can help me with this. Uh, if you see some good questions, uh, read them back to me and so I can answer while I'm drawing. But if you have some questions for me on stuff, uh, feel free to throw it in the chat or if your teacher's okay with it going on microphone, that's fine too, uh, whatever works uh, best. But I'm gonna start designing here. So. I, I want to do something where this is a axolotl. I'm just drawing the ground here that has come out of the uh, out of the water. We're going to make it look especially monstrous. I'm gonna zoom in so y'all can hopefully see it a little bit better. And I'll, I'm trying to figure out how I will incorporate the flames, but. A lot of times it's about iterating on design. So like I might uh, start with this and then decide, you know what, that's an okay one, but I want to change it some. So we're just, again, just sketching here. And Michael, I, I don't want to interrupt, yeah. but I was going to share a question that someone had asked quite oh. a while ago. So this yeah, is Muleman's right. class. Um, what was your inspiration to write spooky graphic novels instead of happy ones? Mm -hmm. And also, what was the best thing that happened to you? This is from Lydia during making the sleepover. 
Awesome. Great question. So uh, like I was saying, like, I just, for whatever reason, I don't know, like some kids, I think just really enjoy scary stuff. And some obviously really don't. And that's fine. Like no one, not, not everybody has to enjoy scary things. Um, but for whatever reason, when I was a kid, they, it just stuck with me. But what I enjoy so much about good horror when it's scary is that it doesn't have to just be scary. It, what, what horror does such a great job of is it allows us to talk about things that most of the time people would just call supernatural, right? So I can put monsters, ghosts, things, all sorts of stuff. And it gives you these amazing storytelling tools that the audience will just sort of accept and I can run with it. And it doesn't have to end in a scary way. And again, um, someone like M. Night Shyamalan, who really makes these amazing scary stories that are really about like learning to forgive people or, um, you know, trust in a higher power or whatever the case might be. It's a message, a place where you can share bigger messages. So in the sleepover, it's it's really a story about learning how to be there for one another when something tragic happens. So it's a it's a story about friends and family coming together to help each other heal from losing somebody. Uh, and hopefully that message comes through really, really strongly in the story. And what was the best thing that happened to me during making the sleepover? Oh, goodness. Um, honestly, like the best things were the unexpected story stuff that came up. So there were there were elements of the story that I hadn't planned on early on. So without revealing uh, pieces of the the story, there is a brother sister dynamic, like I said, and it, the story was so much focused on the brother for so long, and I kept I, I kept having this feeling like the sister should be a bigger part, and suddenly I realized how to make her really pivotal towards the end and have it tie into that bigger story we're talking about and that meaning. And man, that was just such a fun moment. I, I knew that I had the ending of my story figured out, and I was like, oh, I never thought of that before, and it was so I was so excited by it. All right, so I've got a couple of sketches here, but I want to. I'm going to amp it up now. So we're gonna we're gonna try to figure this out. Uh, feel free if there's another question to answer, and I'm gonna start sketching something here that I think will be fun. Any other questions we want to go through? There's a great question from Anna who asks about when you are beginning to make your comic, how do you decide the layout? or how your panels or your boxes, um, what those will look like? Oh, it's a great question. In fact, um, I can show you right here real quick. <clears throat> I'm doing that right now. That's what I'm doing on the book that I'm working on. So you guys are getting to see an early uh, draft version of the new book that I'm working on. Uh, right now, the new story is called Deepwater Creek. That may change it so at some point. But it's this real weird process of like trying things, uh deciding maybe a panel's too big or too small it's it's like kind of playing tetris with your art and it's sort of like where does this image fit in the the best way i know to describe it is that you what you want to do is that you want to make sure that your most prominent image on your page is your most important one so in other words like if there's a big action moment that's happening make sure that image takes up a bigger portion of the page than the other moments um it, it there's a lot of thinking that can go into that. There's a great book out there called Making Comics by Scott McCloud, and he deals a lot with this question too. So I would I would recommend that, but it's a big topic, really kind of hard to answer briefly, but I, I kind of feel my way along. Sometimes like, ooh, that panel's too small, that panel's too big. Um, and then, or maybe I'm putting too much information on a page and I have to pull it away and it just takes some time. So I'm gonna start uh moving this little sketch here it's a little bit more dynamic over let's get a lasso tool and uh, feel free to ask another question if one came up i'm just going to move this so that we here. can start oh sorry them. michael <laughs> yeah, um, no, here is a good one too uh it's so many good questions i have to say this this group is on ball here do you find it easier harder or the same to draw digitally instead of with a regular <laughs> pencil or pen and also any tips for budding digital artists? You great question. So um, I, I find it easier to draw digitally uh, because it's so much easier to fix mistakes and things like that, especially if my editor comes back and is like, oh, this, this art could be better or this isn't clear. Um, that said, I, I really miss drawing on paper, um, especially coloring on paper. And so I've been learning how to watercolor again recently and i've been developing a process where i draw the page digitally 
So, cause it's easy to make mistakes and fix it digitally. And then once I'm happy with it, I actually print that line art out onto a sheet of paper and I watercolor it. And uh, so I do the final art, the coloring and stuff on, on paper, but all the setup art digitally. And that's been an, an interesting process to sort of figure out. Um, I'm gonna turn this page. Uh, and, and as far as tips for people who are learning digital stuff, um, the great news is it's easier than ever to do digital artwork. Um, the iPad and stuff like that has made so much stuff accessible. I would recommend that you use a program called uh, Procreate if you've not used it. It's a great drawing program and it's really affordable. If you're into making comics, I would recommend this program that I'm using called uh, Clip Studio Paint. It's a, a program designed for drawing comic books and it has so many great tools. And then uh, that one has a free version and a paid version. Uh, if you get real serious about it, I recommend the paid version. It's really affordable. And then there's just amazing videos on the internet that you could watch that um, would really help fill in the blanks beyond that. And Michael, Jalen has asked, I'm not sure if you can incorporate this. I'm not an artist. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you could. Sure. Jalen has asked if you can make the uh, monster have shark teeth and vampire fangs. Sure, let's throw it in. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. And I'm going to throw in a really important question that I think Addie asked. Ha have you ever given up on one of your drawings? Have you ever felt like you failed at something in your journey? That's actually a really great question because recently, very recently, I spent six months writing a book that my editor and I thought was going to be my next book. And I decided it was just not working. I was not happy with it. I was kind of really miserable with it. And I really wanted to tell this story about this uh, group of kids who go looking for this monster back in the river. And so uh, that it was really tough because I'd spent so much time. I'd, I'd lost so much time on making a new book. So unfortunately for you all, my next book's been delayed about a year, but you're finding out about this a year into it. So, <laughs> but uh, it's, it, it was, uh, we lost so much time and I felt horrible, but I know it was the right decision because I just had to, I just felt like it wasn't working and I didn't want to make something I was really unhappy with. So yeah, it, it happens and it, it's not a great feeling for sure. We're going to. And I think maybe this. the last question we'll have time for as you start to wrap up is from Miss yeah. Early's fifth grade class. And she wants to know um, were your friends and family supportive of this passion that you have for drawing comics um, as a kid? And, and are they still supportive? <clears throat> Yeah, so uh, they, they've, mo for the most part, been very supportive. I've had certainly people who did not, um, did not see as well about it. Honestly, I had more weird experiences with uh, teachers who didn't uh, like the, the plan that I wanted. They just thought it wasn't real art. That, like I said, there was so much uh, that's changed over time. I'm going to go ahead and start and try to color this thing quickly because I know we're running out of time. Um, and uh, they're just... For whatever reason, comics was not looked upon well when I was a kid. And so that was a really hard battle of like having teachers that really didn't like that I wanted to make art. And I felt that the most when I was in college. And uh, but thank God I had a, a, a professor who loved comics that I met. And he's still a friend with, of mine today. And uh, he really encouraged me. He said, you know, comics are real art and they're really hard uh, to do and to do them well. You shouldn't give up on it. And that really help me get back on the track of, of, of making them? It's a great question. It happens. And I'm gonna just try to throw some flames in here. Uh, sorry, I did, I was, I was planning to add most of these flames as like uh, effects. So we're gonna just sort of try to throw them in real fast. And then just put, put that layer below it. And I am putting in the chat, everyone, um, a survey link so that you can give us your input on on things that you liked about our session, maybe suggestions, and then you'll be entered in our book giveaway. So uh, you can hopefully win some of Michael's great books. And uh, what I could do, if you all would like, because I'd love to see some of the monsters you all come up with and maybe have time to finish, I'll throw uh, an email address in the chat that you guys can use to send me them if you want to send me some pictures. So let me 
slap this in here. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Yep. So you can send things there. I'd love to, to see what you come up with. So this is my, my quick monster. I think I would continue to add more flames and really dig into that, but um, kind of we got a, just a giant axolotl with flames coming out of it. And uh, it's terrorizing this little person up here. So anyway, I wish I, I had more time to finish that up with you all, but I know we're running out of time. Um, yeah, no funny final clause and thoughts there, but thank you. Well, Michael, this what? has been awesome. <laughs> thank you so much. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll stop sharing here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, everyone. I hope it was fun. Oh, it was just wonderful. And all the, the good questions and the ideas that the students had, I just feel energized. So I was saying thank you. Yeah, um, I'm I'll sorry just... I didn't get a chance to look at all of them, but they look like a ton of great questions. Well, thank you for sharing that email address so they can show you. And we would love to see those too, kiddos. Um, also, just a quick thing to let you know that next week we're going to have author Megan E. Freeman. She's a former teacher and has an award-winning novel as well called Alone. And also, those of you out there, writers, drawers, we have our KET Young Writers Contest uh, going on. So please reach out for more info. And we thank you again, Michael. Yeah, thank you so much. It was great. Nice meeting you all. You too. Thank you. Y'all have a great Halloween. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.